guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another ESL podcast. So welcome about back to another TOEFL IBT special. Guys, another lecture. We're going to be talking about the Beluga Wells. I'm really excited about this because some of you have difficulty with listening. Not as much as, obviously, with writing and stuff like that. But I would have to say listening is probably the most problematic. <laughs> writing and speaking are two of the easiest. I believe. Reading's not too bad. Actually, reading's pretty easy, too. But listening is a pain in the ass. So we have to deep dive into this. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to screen share this bad boy. We're going to get straight into this. This is a four and a half minute lecture. All right. Lecture, lecture, lecture. Now, you must and you must remember that on the ArsenioBuckShow.com, you guys probably uh, will have already seen my blog because the blog is going to go up just about no the blog's gonna go up probably at the same time or i might put it in the comment section it depends but i need to write my notes so that you guys see the notes that i actually write for those of you in the podcast you'll have to refer over to my website but all of this lecture including the questions oh i'm not going to show you the questions because you don't get to see the questions all right i'm going to take the notes and we're going to compare the notes that i've taken the information I've gotten down and see if I'm able to answer the questions or remember what was actually said. You're going to be able to take notes during the listening portion of this test. Remember that. But it depends how you take the notes. And that is the big question because if you take proper notes, you will not have difficulty in answering the questions. So watch how I take these notes. And then after that, what I'm going to do is go down to the questions and we're going to see, all right, what information, you know, what can I, can we use the process of elimination? Did I get some things right? Did I not get some things right? So it's all about just taking these down because again, if you're not good at note taking, this could be a huge issue for you. So with that being said, and for those of you listening to me on my podcast, you're going to hear my notes. You're going to hear me say the questions and give you guys some of the answers and go from there. Okay. So here we go. Listen in, lecture, Beluga Well. Let me make sure that my computer's not lagging or anything because obviously Mac and, you know, Apple, they have a tendency of lagging because that's just how they do uh, just so we could purchase more of their, uh, their, their newer products that are basically the same products. But nonetheless, that's another topic for another day. Let's get into this. This lecture series, we've been looking at how different creatures have evolved in order to withstand the extreme conditions of the environment that they live in. We're going to continue this train of thought today by looking at the beluga whale, which is native to Arctic and subarctic regions. Here's a picture of it so that you can recognize the creature that I'm talking about. It grows to around 20 feet long, and it weighs something in the region of 2,000 to 3,000 pounds. And one of the first adaptations that we notice is its all white color, which serves to camouflage it in the icy environment, protecting it from predators such as polar bears and killer whales. As with most of the other polar animal species, beluga whales store most of their body fat as a thick layer of blubber just beneath their skin. This blubber accounts for up to 40% of the whale's total body weight. It protects the animal from extreme cold and doubles up as an energy reserve, which they will utilize in times of emergency. The beluga has another internal way of using its own body heat efficiently. Its arteries in the flippers and flukes are surrounded by veins. Does anyone want to guess why the arteries surrounded by veins can help keep the beluga whale warm? Well, I think when the heat passes through these arteries, it is transferred to the blood inside the veins rather than being lost to the environment. And that, I think, helps the beluga whale keep warm. That's correct. In addition, the beluga whale slows down its heart rate while diving. A beluga whale's heartbeat slows from about 100 beats per minute to 15 to 20 beats per minute. And this is crucial while deep sea diving. While diving, the oxygen flow in its body is altered. Oxygen is shunted away from those organs which are tolerant of low oxygen levels and is diverted towards those organs which require it the most, like the heart, lungs, and brain. At the same time, the oxygen-binding protein myoglobin ensures that problems like muscle oxygen deficiency are kept at bay. Having said that, the beluga doesn't dive very deeply. It is seldom seen at depths lower than 20 meters although on rare occasions they've been spotted below 100 meters. Now, 
Let's look at another characteristic of the beluga whale, the absence of a dorsal fin. The dorsal fin, with its large surface area, allows too much heat to escape. In fact, we don't see a dorsal fin in any of the three Arctic whales or the Arctic dolphin. Instead of the dorsal fin, they have a rough ridge along their backs, which is believed to be all that remains of it. Would the absence of a dorsal fin affect a beluga whale's movement? You might think that the lack of a dorsal fin might make the beluga less agile, but that is not the case at all. In fact, belugas are surprisingly agile. They have surprisingly good maneuvering skills. For example, they can actually swim backwards just as well as they can swim forwards. More importantly, they can even swim with ease in shallow water. This is important because river estuaries in shallow coastal areas are often warmer than the open seas, and so this maneuverability means that they can stay alive in warmer waters. Another physical feature that allows beluga whales to survive in the deep waters of the Arctic is the blowhole. The whale breathes in through this opening, holds its breath while underwater, and then exhales just when it nears the surface by opening this blowhole. Finally, let's talk about its large forehead, which is often referred to as a melon. This melon-shaped forehead is filled with oil, and the oil facilitates echolocation, which helps the whale to monitor its surroundings, which is particularly important for a creature that has to navigate its way under ice sheet and find gaps in the ice where it can breathe. How this works is that the beluga whales produce sound waves which travel through the water, bounce against objects in its surroundings, and return to its forehead. The time required for these sound waves to travel is calculated, and the location of that object is tracked. The other, less significant use of the melon is to show facial expression. The whale can change the amount of oil in the forehead, therefore making different faces. Make different faces! There it is! Oh my god! Lots and lots of notes, people. Now, for those of you listening to me in my podcast, my goodness gracious, this was a lot, okay? But... Let's get into what I actually wrote down compared to what you had written down. Now, how creatures evolved to survive, that's what they were talking about before. Then they went into the beluga whale, native to Arctic and subarctic regions, grows to 20 feet long and can weigh anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 pounds. It's all white, camouflage and icy environment and protect from, well, which protects them from polar, be- polar bears and killer whales. So what I had written down was polar and killers. I don't want to write down bear, and well, because again, I already have a mental note. Well, there's nothing else that will follow polar except bear, except polar ice caps and other things. But again, it protects from different types of animals. And the only types of animals would be polar bears and killer whales. Killer whales. Now, stores body fat and blubber. This is very similar to something I had heard before. I can't remember if it was on ITP or if it was in one of the speaking for segments, but uh, 40% of the total body weight is, I'm guessing stored in the bot in, in the body fat. Ooh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh Oh, but anyways, protects from extreme cold. Okay. Energy reserve arteries are surrounded by veins. The veins helps transfer heat through the transfer. It transfers heat throughout the body rather than releasing it into the environment. Okay. It can slow down heart rate or its heart rate while diving. The oxygen is altered to organs that require more oxygen and it deviates away from uh, organs that uh, don't really need oxygen as much as the vital organs. Does it dive too deep? 20 meters normally, it could dive anywhere. It could dive, I guess it could be seen up to 100 meters in depth. Another characteristic, the absence of the dorsal fin allows too much heat to escape. It has a rough ridge instead. Belugas are very agile, good maneuvering skills, and can swim backwards with ease. Shallow areas, more, uh, it's warmer than open seas. It can stay alive in warmer waters. Not exactly sure what I wrote down there, but who cares? The blowhole. Oh, my God. We're aware of the blowhole, right? Holds breath while under the water and exhales at the surface. Large forehead melon, melon-shaped forehead filled with oil. 
helps to monitor surroundings. It can send out these different types of, I don't know, ultrasonic waves. Who knows? Shows facial expressions is another technique that it uses along with, you know, uh, having that oil in its head. So that's basically what I had written down. All right. I would like to know what you guys had written down. Okay, you could type in the comment section or you could go on to my Instagram and tell me what you ended up writing throughout that little process because I'm going to chop this up and put this into video format too. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, with that being said, let's check out the questions. And that question number one is what is the lecture mainly about? How beluga whales have adapted to their environment? The life cycle? of a beluga whale, threats to the beluga whale, the distinctive features of polar whales. Now, polar whales or beluga whales? Now, polar whales, I think the only other mention I heard was there were three types, and I don't even think he named them. The threats to the beluga whale, the only two threats to the beluga whale would be the polar bear and the killer whale. So that's not what it's mainly about the life cycle of the beluga whale or how beluga whales have adapted to their environment? Type your answer in the comment section. So, ooh, this one's really interesting. So, oh, oh, this isn't too bad. Well, maybe, maybe, okay. Uh, we have complete the table with the part of the body that shows the adaptations below. So adaptation, insulation, protection from predators, Minimization of heat loss. What body part? And those three body parts are skin color, blubber, artery vein arrangement. So artery vein arrangement. Could that be connected to the minimization or minimization of heat loss? Potentially. The blubber, uh, more for insulation, right? It keeps them, is it because it keeps, it doesn't keep them warm or does it keep them warm? Not exactly sure. Skin color, protection from predators. Yes, because it has an icy white coating. So I know skin color, protection from predators. So what are you guys going to do with the blubber and the artery uh, arrangement? Because again, I remember artery heat loss. Bam, that's what I would do. But what would you do? So this is how I associate different things because with the artery, I associated that with heat loss or heat in general. So that's how I would connect artery with heat loss, okay? And then blubber, of course, with insulation, kind of keeping it warm, I'm guessing. <sighs> so now going into question number three. I'm going to give this guy, I'm going to give this to you. Two answers is what you have to pick. You have four. Which of the following are true about dorsal fins? The beluga is the only well not to have a dorsal fin? Ooh. The beluga well has a rough ridge in place of a dorsal fin? Ding, 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 ding! Body heat is lost via a well's dorsal fin? Or the lack of a dorsal fin makes the beluga well less agile? No, because that's a contradiction to what I had written above, right? It's just as agile with than it is without. So what you would have to do is body heat is lost via a whale's dorsal fin or the beluga is the only whale not to have a dorsal fin. Type your answer in the comment section. Number four, what happens when beluga whales die? They use their blowholes to extract oxygen from the water. But when they dive, the animal's heart rate increases to 100 beats per minute. That's one thing I forgot to write down. Oxygen is diverted away from the heart, brain, and lungs? No, it's diverted too, not away. If it's diverted away, it's going to die. Get that answer out of there. A protein is used to maintain... Uh, no, absolutely not. So is it they use their blowholes to extract oxygen from the water or the animal's heart rate increases to 100 beats per minute? All right, type your answer in the comment section. And number five, what advantage of... Oh, I hate that word. Echolocation, I'm just going to call it that. And cold environments is given in the lecture. It helps belugas find scarce food. It helps belugas avoid predation. It helps belugas breathe. Or it helps belugas find warmer waters. Ooh, it's a little bit of a tough one. I'm going to leave all four of those open for you guys. And the last one, which of the following are the benefits that a beluga whale's forehead provides? 
facial expression, echolocation, heat insulation, blood circulation. Heat and blood, no. Is it facial or echo? So with that being said, I wanted to make this as back and forth as possible for everyone who's watching this. So again, check the blog, comment on my blog, comment on the Facebook video, comment on the YouTube video. Go to my Instagram, tag me, let me know what you think. And again, put it in your stories and let me know overall what you think. And with that being said, that is the end of this lecture, man. That was tasty, that was sexy. I'm so happy about that. And again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you guys want this type of training, again, before the end of the year, it's priced, it's priced at $30 an hour, okay? That goes for the reading, listening, speaking, and writing sections. It will increase 33% beginning January 1st. Keep that in mind. Make the, okay, make the, what is it? Make a decision as soon as possible. Also, speaking evaluations, that's also available. So you make sure you tune in to me and make sure you reach out to me and I'll be waiting here for you. I'm your host as always. And thanks for tuning in to another video or ESL podcast over and out.